and like, ah, you're too noisy. I'm like, I said, you don't have to be around me. Friendship may actually go beyond just relating on a, a superficial, play, a superficial basis. basis. There's the adage that says, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. There are some of us who are not very good at regular visits, but oh. because they are friends, you have to order to maintain that friendship. The emotional state of the parents is usually directly proportional to the emotional state of, of the children. Welcome to our favorite family show right here on Equa Television International. My name is Amaka Ucheke. And many of you have heard or know somebody personally who has suffered from breast cancer. And we know in our environment, whenever the word cancer is mentioned, people are filled with fear and trepidation. So we decided today in um, commemoration of this month, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, to talk about breast cancer, to let us know about it, to let us know how to prevent it and what to do about it so that we know that, that you have breast cancer does not mean a death sentence. So on, on set with me today to discuss this very important issue are some of my colleagues, Professor Messi Isichie, who took out time from her busy schedule to join us. Messi Isichie is... Um, a general surgeon and um, she and her husband also run um, the Faith Alive Hospital which I'm sure many of us know about. Mercy, thank you for coming. Thank you, nice being here. Yes, and Dr. Comfort Eguda who is also a consultant radiologist has also taken time out of her busy schedule, she's a very busy woman, to join us. She also, she's also the CEO of CRAD Diagnostics, right? Yes, that's what it is. So thank you so much for taking time to come on this show to talk about breast cancer. Thank you for having me. Yes. So, Mercy, let's start with you. They say about 250,000 Nigerian women are dying yearly from breast cancer. Is it really a problem or is it a rumor? Well, it is a problem. Uh, statistics are not actually very accurate in our country. So we may have less, we may have more. Uh, we can't tell, but it is a real problem for 250,000 women to die from this disease. It is a big problem. So in your own experience, Comfort, are you seeing plenty of women coming for tests, diagnosis, diagnostic procedures for breast cancer? Yes, we are, we are seeing a lot of women coming for breast cancer screening. And in fact, what is even a bit more alarming is that we're seeing breast cancer in younger women in their 30s. Um, many of them don't have any family history. Many of them don't even know what it is. You know, they just come and say, oh, I felt a lump. Oh, I have a discharge. And then you do the um, um, investigations and find that it's actually breast cancer. So yes, breast cancer is a problem, a big problem actually in our environment. So let's see, let's go straight. So what causes breast cancer? Well, um, the real cause of breast cancer is unknown for most cancers. We don't know what causes it. But there are things we call risk factors. So these factors could be something that somebody is born with, that is you inherited it, or it can be something you got from the environment, um, such as general social activities like smoking, alcohol can predispose people to breast cancer. And then uh, what we call early meneki, when a female begins to uh, see menstrual periods at a very, very young age, their body is exposed to something called 
estrogen and progesterone and these hormones predispose someone to breast cancer. So if you start some periods too early and you don't stop at about the age of 45 to 50, you are, your body is getting exposed to the estrogen for a longer period of time. So one is likely to, can easily um, get breast cancer. And then there are other uh, risk factors such as taking contraceptives. Uh, we, we talk more about the combined oral contraceptives, which Amaka, you know more about <laughs> than me. Uh, not the other types of uh, contraceptives like uh, the loop, they don't cause uh, breast cancer. And then people who don't want to breastfeed, they give birth to children and they don't want to breastfeed, not because they have a sickness that stops them from breastfeeding. The breast gets engorged with milk and then gets reabsorbed and then engorged. And in that process, uh, people can also develop uh, breast cancer. And then people who don't start having children early, you know, those are also risk factors. So there are so many risk uh, factors, but these are common ones that I could just Is there something mention. else you want to mention about risk factors that she hasn't? Mm, yes. A positive family history mm -hmm. is actually yeah. a, Break it a down. significant... What do, you mean, what do you mean by positive family history? <laughs> what, what I mean is um, when someone in the family has breast cancer okay, and they so say a first degree sister. relative, that's yes. mother, sister or daughter, the risk is increased. Breast cancer also occurs in males. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important thing yes. to yes. notice. It's not only one percent yes. of breast cancer occurs in males. And so if there's a male in the family with breast cancer, then it also increases the risk of other members of the family having breast cancer. Another thing I'll mention is obesity. Mm -hmm. um, when one's weight is above what it should be for height, then um, there's an increased risk of breast cancer. Also, a sedentary lifestyle. I'm saying... Explain. <laughs> what do you mean by sedentary lifestyle? I'm sorry, I'm using big no, words. it's fine. It's fine. So that <laughs> what I mean about. by a sedentary lifestyle is an inactive lifestyle. You know, you move from the couch to your bed, to your bed watch TV for long hours, or even your job can be sedentary. Some jobs involve sitting at a desk in front of a computer from morning till 4 p.m. Mm. So if you have such a job, of course, you shouldn't leave your job, but you should have a more active lifestyle outside of the office. Mm. Like you should have an exercise um, habit. You know, you should do exercise. You should go for walks and things like that. So I think those two okay. are other risk factors. Being a woman is a risk factor. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, yeah, being a woman. There's nothing you can do about it, but being a woman and then increasing age also is a risk factor. As you get older. Yes, as one gets older, the risk of breast um, cancer in increases. So, Messi, apart from smoking and taking alcohol, are there other things that you eat that could predispose you to breast cancer? Yeah, she also mentioned overweight and most of the food that uh, make people get overweight are uh, refined foods, you know, eating lots of carbohydrate, you know, not taking too much of uh, vegetables can predispose one to um, breast cancer. And uh, w w she also mentioned the genetic uh, predisposition as a mother having it and the children are likely to have it. Even if the mother and the father don't have breast cancer, if they have a history of cancer in their families, also okay, a other cancers apart from yes. breast cancer. Okay. Yes, and um, there's also high, high, very high chance when a male in the family has had uh, prostate cancer okay. or has prostate cancer because there are some genetic pathways that are linked uh, together. And also so ovarian cancer. Ovarian yes. cancer, yes. 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 And ovarian cancer, all those. Okay, you talked about so, refined food. Please yes. break it down. What do you mean by refined food? Okay, um, foods that are very quick, you know, to cook. Things like, uh, we're not saying you shouldn't eat them <laughs> at all. <laughs> Only that you, you can you limit modify it. them. Limit them or modify them. Eat them with your vegetables. Things mm. like Indomie is cheap and very fast, so two minutes. People are eating in the morning, breakfast, lunch, you know, dinner, especially students. 
uh, like you mentioned, um, like Dr. Comfort mentioned earlier, she said we are seeing it in younger age. And uh, some of the predisposing factors could be some of these refined uh, diets that we're eating. Bread, uh, too much bread, rice, we no longer want to... Uh, it's local rice. It's yes. local food, you know. We want White things rice. that are quick, fast. Mm -hmm. Those but, are but is Gary also refined or not refined? Because Gary is fast to make <laughs> when mm -hmm. you soak it. So I heard somebody say Gary was um, was a refined food. I don't know. I think it uh, is. Well, it mm -hmm. is a refined food, but it has high roughage. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, it's the processing that matters. If it is not well processed, the cyanide content will be very high. Okay. And that can predispose someone. It can now serve as a, as a bad refined food. Otherwise, otherwise, it is not a bad one. Okay. Thank you. So many years ago, I, and if, if, yes, many years ago, somebody came um, to the clinic where I was working. And they said she had some problem in her breast. When she finally opened removed the clothes, removed the layers of clothes, and her breast came out. I just started shouting mm. because the breast had ulcers. There was wounds all over. And I was like, how could you have been living with this thing? Her husband was a health worker. Mm. And I'm like, oh, God, why could you? How could you have allowed your wife have such sores? Of course, the breast it was already advanced mm -hmm. by the time they came. So in, how does breast cancer present? Breast cancer presents in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, for everybody, it's different. For some people, it's a lump. Okay. For some people, it's pain. Though pain is not one of the key um, <coughs> excuse me, features of breast cancer. What do you mean by lump? So that people understand what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> what I mean by lump is a hard spot. Normally, if, the breast, if you feel the breast, the breast is soft. But when you feel something hard in the breast, then that's a lump. And it needs to be checked. Because not all lumps are cancers. Yes, most lumps are actually not cancer. But you never know until you go for a checkup. So if you feel a lump in your breast, it's very important to go to the right place. Not to a chemist, not to what we call gargadja, <laughs> the local people. A or you house. should or in fact not to a <laughs> prayer house prayer house can come later yes. but i think you should go to the hospital first and see a doctor that is trained to check the lump and then other tests will be um, recommended of course apart from lump a breast breast cancer can present as changes in the color of the skin over the breast it can look greenish it can look dark it can look reddish it can present as a discharge from the nipple um, in a woman who is not breastfeeding, ideally nothing should come out. But now a discharge that is having blood or having a greenish or a, any color, brownish color, it should be checked. A brownish color may not necessarily be breast cancer, but then it has to be to checked. Check blood is usually more linked to breast cancer than um, other um, colors. Um, other things include a lump in the armpit, for instance. If you feel a lump... Or you say it's not, it's not in the breast, it's in the armpit. No, even a breast cancer can present as a lump in the armpit. The nipple can be pulled back or pulled in a different direction. The skin, too, may be pulled inwards. So these are some of the ways, breast cancer. ways yes, that breast, breast cancer other ways. can present. Yes, it can present as an eczema on the skin. People will just say they have a itching around especially around the nipple areola uh, area i realize the dark area around yes around the, the nipple. dark area okay. around the nipple you feel people someone would tell you that there's some itching there and they'll be treating eczema it's good to quickly see a doctor because that skin can be scraped and sent for biopsy and that is when you can confirm that it's uh, breast cancer these are other ways that breast cancer can present. Okay. Now somebody, and then some people will have wounds also. Yes, like, yeah. yes, like you said. So, mm -hmm. okay, somebody has any of these symptoms, and we've been told that you need to go to the right place. And that's the hospital. Yes. Not Gargadia or prayer mm -hmm. house or whatever. Mm. Um, because I've heard some people 
being given up. And then don't listen to your neighbors. They say sit at home, mm. rub this, rub that, olive oil. Somebody said they told her to be, they told a friend to be drinking castor oil. Meanwhile, she already had mm. ulcers on the breast until the thing spread. So when somebody comes to the hospital now, mm. they come to you. What what do they what would should they expect when you go to the hospital with any of these symptoms? What should you expect? Uh, so when we see a patient, we have to first of all uh, examine, and then when we arrive at um, a probable diagnosis of breast cancer, before we get to that, I would like to say that breast cancer is in stages. There's early and late stages. So the early stages are stages that are very, very, it's just a dot. And that is when Dr. Comfort picks it very, very early for us because it's picked on mammography. And in such cases, the patient doesn't even have to lose her breast because the treatment is easier and the chances of getting cure is very, very high. And that is stage one and two. Then there's stage three that is in between. And then we have stage four and five. Once you are there, you have already uh, gotten to advanced stages because by that time the the cancer have left the breast and have gone into other parts of the body like the swelling in the armpits that she mentioned that's what we call the axillary nodes and then it can go to the lungs it can go to the bones it can go to the liver it can go to the brain you know the we call it llb liver lung and then bone and and brain so depending on the stage we pick uh, we see the patient, we'll classify them, and then the staging will determine the kind of treatment we'll offer the patient. Uh, some people will tell you they don't want biopsy, and that has caused a lot of delay because they will come back when the tumor has already uh, so what's, advanced. So what, what is biopsy? Okay, biopsy is taking a little out of the um, lump and then sending it for confirmation. Yes that it is uh, breast cancer. When we send, when women go for mammography, the mammography will give us, well, there are like five different, doctor, I will allow Dr. Comfort to mention mm -hmm. the yeah, five different about. ways in which they will look at the breast, at mammography, and then they would send to us that this is highly suspicious, suspicious. for breast cancer. And then they will tell us at what point they saw that lesion. And we'll go to that point Usually, if there's a lump, you feel it. Sometimes there may not be a lump. And under, under with uh, uh, ultrasound guidance, you can also get straight to that point. And then take a little sample out of there and then send it to the uh, pathologist who will now read and tell us that there are cancer cells there. Now, the time between when we get, when we do these tests and to get the result matters. Because when people stay at home, they are busy mm. running from one place to the other. Mm. The cancer is spreading. Or thinking about you know, it. Or thinking about it. Yes, mm. taking too long to take decision is one of the big problems uh, we have. But for mm. those who decide quickly that they want that done and it's done, we begin treatment. Because you can't treat someone for cancer if the person does not have cancer. The treatment is, is not uh, easy because chemotherapy, they don't have all the therapies that we are using, they are not easy on the body. So you can't subject somebody to cancer treatment if the person doesn't have cancer. And uh, starting early is also one of the key factors. And you don't want to remove somebody's breast or take out of, you know, part of someone's breast if that breast is not harboring cancer. Because it's only for cancers that we mainly do uh, mastectomy, that's removing the breast. Okay, so the treatments that you offer mm. would range, depending on the stage, yes. would range from mastectomy, mm -hmm. okay, removing the lump alone, yes. mastectomy, Stectomy, chemotherapy, therapy. radiotherapy. Do you do radiotherapy yes. for? We send them to okay. other places to where do they do radiotherapy. radiotherapy. And then mastectomy can be modified. It can be, uh, there's what we call uh, uh, sparing mastectomies. We don't want to remove everything. We spare some, Some part of it, issue. yes, depending on the stage of the cancer. So okay. they are modified. And do people survive? Yes, 
people survive. We've had a woman that has lived for up to 30 years until she moved. In fact, she was in this church until she uh, left just to go back home to stay with her family for 30 years. And she went through all the processes. Each time we said, oh, there's, if she feels a lump or anything along the surgery, uh, at the surgical uh, scar, and we tell her we want to remove it, she doesn't argue, we will remove it. If we needed to subject her to chemotherapy again, she would do that. And she's lived for 30 good years. Has a shop, she's been running her shop, supporting her family. So it's something you can live with. In fact, some people abroad, the, the survival is almost getting to 100 now because they pick it early and they you know, treat it early. But for us, patients come late. late. And even when they come late, they don't want to accept what you want to offer them at that time. And then they would accept only when it has already overwhelmed their body. And by that time, the chemotherapy you are offering is palliative measure, just to give them a little more time. And better and to, quality of life. Yes, yeah. and better quality of life. And then people will begin to say, oh, it is when the person got chemotherapy that the, the person, person died. died. Meanwhile, the person was you know? already <laughs> on that side. So, so the earlier, the better. And accepting treatment, you know, early. We, know it's, we, we also know it's not easy, even yeah. as physicians. We know that the patient is not going through something uh, that is palatable. But sometimes you have to face it to be able to reap out of it. Because it's not a continuous thing. The chemotherapy is usually like six doses, sometimes eight. And we stop and add other things to it, depending on what is feeding the cancer cells. Because there are different things in the body that is feeding, feed, uh, feeding the cancer cells. Or except uh, there's a group that is called the triple negative, and that is one that is really bad because you don't know what is feeding the cancer cells. Okay, thank you very much. So viewers, we'll go on break, and when we come back, we'll talk about how to prevent cancers or how to pick them up very early so that we don't have the bad outcome that we heard about. We've heard about somebody who's lived for 30 years um, with um, breast cancer. So when we go back, when well, we go on break, we'll come back, we'll open up our phone lines. After we have discussed prevention, then you can um, call in to contribute to the conversation. I've been here talking with Professor Messi Sichie and Dr. Comfort Eguda. So see you right after the break. My name is Amaka Ocheke. Uh, we anchor the program, The Living Room, right here on Equa TV International. You are welcome to watch us every Monday. The Living Room is a very interesting family program where we discuss everything you want to know about family. We talk about our children's mental health. Keep watching. Our program is always here, 5.30 every Monday. We ask, want you to ask questions. We want you to phone in and drop topics that you want us to talk about, even on our media handle on Facebook. We are there. So keep watching, keep listening, The Living Room. Welcome back from the break. We've been here at the living room on Equa Television International with Professor Messi Sichie, Dr. Comfort Eguda, talking about breast cancer. We've talked about the causes of breast cancer, well, risk factors, actually, because um, we've been told that we, we don't know what exactly causes it, but there are risk factors that increases your risks of having breast cancer and just being a woman, <laughs> Dr. Comfort told us, is <laughs> <Yes. laughs> a risk. But we've been told that breast cancer diagnosis is not a death sentence. If it's picked up early, the prognosis can be very good. 
and um, Professor Isiche shared with us about one of her patients who has lived for 30 years with breast cancer because she has been a very good and cooperative patient. So, Dr. Eguda, let's talk about how to pick up breast cancer early or how to pick up lesions that um, may look like breast cancer. So what, how do we do that? Yes, a number of things can be done to pick up breast cancer early because the campaign is actually based on the fact that early detection of breast cancer is key. A cure can actually be um, achieved if breast cancer is picked up very early. So how? First of all, we talk about self-breast examination. Women are encouraged to even know their breast, feel your breast by yourself, look at your breast and know your breast so that if um, there's, there's any, any thing, change yeah. or if there's any new thing, you can pick it up. So self-breast examination is something a woman can do once a month. You so Mercy, uh, Mercy will show us how to do that later oh, when you finish. Yes. Okay. So it's something a woman should do once a month. You pick a time. It's preferably after menses. the monthly menses because the breasts change. <coughs> Excuse me. The breast change during menstruation for most people can be um, fuller, heavier, but you want to catch the breast when they are just in their normal, natural state. So you pick a time, give like maybe a week, let's say, <coughs> excuse me, a week after menstruation, and then um, what you do is you undress from your waist up and just stand in front of a mirror, and then you look at your breast. You know, look at your breast. Um, are there any colors on the skin? How does your breast look? Are, the breasts have different shape, different sizes. So get used to your breast. What's the shape? What's the size? Are they both the same size? Sometimes one breast is slightly bigger than the other. You should also know that. So that if the one that wasn't bigger suddenly becomes bigger, then you know that, yes, something is going on there. Sometimes you may have scars on the skin, just the way you can have scars on other parts of the body. You should also know that what color is the skin around the nipple and all that. So that if there's a new color, red, green, or whatever, you can see it. Then also, you're supposed to raise up your hands as you do that. So come and, I'll um, stop you about that breast examination. <laughs> the is going to demonstrate Okay, so, so let me leave you that. You can move on to... Let me leave that. Um, so yeah. self-breast examination is what every young woman and old woman should do for themselves monthly. So that if you feel something, you run to the hospital. But from a medical perspective now, what do we do? Um, women above 40 are encouraged to do a screening mammography once a year. Now, mammography is an x-ray of the breast, and it can pick up very early signs of cancer. Mammography is recognized worldwide as the screening test for breast cancer. It can pick up very early, even when there is no lump, even when you don't feel a lump, mammography can pick up very small signs like tissue distortions or um, small, small calcifications, even when there is no lump. And the doctors can do what they're supposed to do. They can take a biopsy and things like that. Mammography is recommended in women above 40. Not that it can't be done in women below 40, but um, 40 is taken as the age because of um, the breast um, tissues in women below 40 tend to be more glandular. That's, they tend to be the tissues that produce milk. And those tissues don't appear very clear on mammography. So it's preferred in women above 40. But if there's a strong family history of breast cancer, like in your mother, in your sister, or in a daughter, it is recommended that mammography be started earlier. It can be started as much as 10 years earlier to pick up the early signs of um, breast cancer. Of course, mammography can also be done when there's already a lump or there is um, a nipple discharge or any other um, features that the patient comes with. It will show the lump clearly. Um, when mammography is done, we actually um, classify the findings based on what we call a BIRADS scoring system. I won't bore you with what that means, <laughs> but basically it's graded from zero to six. Zero means that um, we need to do more. Maybe we need to do other tests to confirm. Virads 1 means it's normal. Virads 2 means 
there are some findings, but they are not cancer. They are benign. You know, we said earlier that there are so many kinds of lump in the breast, and most of them are not cancer. So if, for instance, mammography, mammography picks a cyst, a cyst is not cancer. We classify it as Barad 2, which is benign. Then there is probably benign. Oh, we're not sure, you know. So we give advice. You can go for a biopsy or you can um, have a short interval of like three to six months and then come back and repeat it so that we, if, for instance, there was a very tiny lump and then after six months it has grown and it has developed certain features like what we call micro um, calcifications, then we know that that lump should be investigated further. Then we come to the suspicious ones, that they have features that are either suspicious or highly suspicious for breast cancer. There are certain features on a mammography that will make you say, um, this is most likely breast cancer. So that's features like microcalcifications, the margin of the lesions too, when the margins are not clearly defined. What I mean by clearly defined is like you can actually use a pencil, you know, and trace it round. For something like a cyst, ideally you can trace it round with a pencil. But when it's breast cancer, you see margins that are difficult to trace. And then irregularity of the margins. There's something we call speculated margins, where you see bands extending from the edge of the lesion into the surrounding tissues. So when we see these features, we'll give it a Birad's 4 or 5, which is suspicious or highly suspicious. And then, of course, the patient will be referred to go and see a general surgeon who will now decide to take a part of the tissue, do a biopsy, and send it for what we call histology, which is a lab analysis. And then it comes back. When it comes back as cancer, then you still stay with the general surgeon and have all the treatment options that have already been outlined. And then by, by at six is when there's already a diagnosis of cancer. So we classify from zero to six. Also, there's breast ultrasound. You know, we said we prefer to do mammography in women above 40. But then in women below 40, we prefer to do ultrasound first. Like I said, not that they can't have a mammogram, but we prefer to do ultrasound first because ultrasound sees better through the glandular tissues. And ultrasound can also pick some features of cancer, like the margins of the lesion. And ultrasound is very good to study the armpit, the axilla, the lymph nodes, in the armpit, there are features you see in the lymph nodes that you know that um, cancer has started to spread into these lymph nodes, either their size or their color, what we call their echo texture and things like that. So ultrasound too is very good. It can also be done in women above 40, but it is not a screening test. There's also MRI, magnetic resonance imaging of the breast. Well, not readily available on the plateau, but um, it is also a very good way of imaging the breast because it does not use radiation. You know, we said mammography is an X-ray of the breast. So in younger women who have a family history of cancer, for instance, maybe a woman has been seen to have um, what we call the BRCA genes that predispose to cancer, and then maybe she has noticed something in her breast. MRI is usually preferred as a first line. In such women, you don't want to expose them to the radiation because they are very young. And at the same time, MRI can pick certain features of the cancer before you decide what else to do. And then when we're looking for spread, there are a lot of options too. There's what we call PET. It's, um, it uses radiation. It can detect spread anywhere in the body. The whole body can be imaged. Again, it's not readily um, available. In fact, in the whole Nigeria, there's only one or two places where you can get um, PET done. But PET is very good, especially for women who are presenting with advanced stage. It's good to know where it has spread to. What we have readily available is CT scan. CT scan can detect an MRI to detect spread of um, breast cancer or any cancer actually to other parts of the body. Okay. Yes. So, what you see all the tests she's mentioning. Mm. So, the easiest thing to do is to do breast self-examination yes. and do mammography or ultrasound. Or ultrasound. Scan so that you, it's picked up earlier. Early you don't enough. have to start looking for where to do PET, pet. scan. <laughs> or PET so, CT or MRI. <laughs> so, Prof. Sister will demonstrate to us on, we have a mannequin breast here. Yeah. 
can't use real breasts for you us to see, but we use this one <laughs> for her to demonstrate to us how to examine our breasts because Comfort has already told us that every woman should examine her breast every month. Yes. Okay, thank you. So this is a mannequin breast, and um, a woman is supposed to stand preferably in front of a mirror. Uh, we encourage immediately after having your bath, before you clean uh, your body, before you use uh, your towel, because the water on your skin makes it easy to, for your hand to move over the breast. And uh, you can do it within one week after menstruation. Uh, sometimes, uh, a lot of time we advise you should do it the day after you stop, because people tend to forget when okay. you know to do it but if they, are, they finish their menstruation today and then the next day they are supposed to do breast examination they tend to remember it uh, earlier and uh, the breast size the breast would have started returning back to its uh, normal size so you stand in front of the mirror look at the color look at the size of your breast look at the color look at the skin look at the nipples the nipples are supposed to be you know pointing outwards now there are people who naturally have retracted nipples but when they you know pull it it comes out so it's not just because your nipple is naturally retracted doesn't mean that you have uh, breast cancer but if your breast is uh, your nipple is naturally like this and then it begins to go, go in inside the then something is pulling it inside and then um, you take note of every uh, scar that you have on whatever you have on your breast just take note of it because each time you look at it you will note when something new has come up there and then you lift one hand above your head and then that's the side you're going to examine first is the side that you use, uh, you, the, that's the side that the hand will be put on your head. And then you use the opposite hand to do the examination. So, and you have to go in the same direction. If you start going from right to left, you have to continue that way. And if you want to um, go from uh, uh, right to left, you go the same way but you cannot move from here and then jump to here you have to go you know systematically, systematically. can you see the way i'm going round? you go round, pressing 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 and until you come back to where you started and then you come to the middle where the nipple is and then you press in and rub most times because your finger cannot get up to the nipple except if you have a small breast. So while you're going all around this area, you're not touching this point. So for those who have very big breasts, they can even go around twice before you come to the nipple areola area and then you rub, pressing within. If you feel any lump, you go back there and feel for it note what it is does it feel hard is it painful is it moving because there are so many things that can happen but once you notice that this is something that was not there before then seek help and when you have done that you now press the nipple to see if something is coming out uh, amaka the it's not coming, <laughs> it's not coming out so you will look at the color sometimes women would see uh, milk coming out and milk is not something to worry about but any color other than milk you should check it out but even if, if there is milk and they are not breastfeeding and you are not they breastfeeding. should come and see us it's yes. A yes yes see <laughs> the, the gynecologist yes, yes, <laughs> and then could be a problem. <laughs> and then you lift your armpit and then feel for any swelling in the armpit remember uh, when dr comfort was speaking she said sometimes it can present as a lump in the armpit so you feel for that and then once you have done one side you bring down your hand on that side and then do the opposite side and the men can also help their wives you know to check for lumps in the breast because we've, we've had many women as oh, always their husbands yeah. that are picked it so for those who are married husbands should also be interested in knowing how to do it they can check for their wives and if they feel any lump, they can inform their wives. 
Thank you very much, Mercy. So, viewers, we are putting our number on the screen now. You can call in. We don't have much time, but in case you have a pressing question or comment, feel free to call. The number is there on the screen. So, thank you very much, Mercy. And I okay. hope everybody follows through with the breast self exam. Okay, what of those who have stopped menstruating? When do they examine their breasts? Good question. For those who have stopped menstruating, you just pick a date and make sure that every month on that date you do your um, self check. Okay, so like yes. today, tenth. And yeah, then for so mammography, okay. yeah, for mammography in some most of the developed countries, you will receive a text on mm. your on your birthday, birthday to that it's do. time for you to do mm. your mammography. For us, we don't do that, <laughs> but we hope. We'll, we'll get reach, there. Yes, we'll, we'll get, get there, there one day. <laughs> and then uh, Dr. Comfort doesn't have to say, oh, I'm doing promo before people will come and do their uh, okay. mammography. So still on mammography, Comfort, let's get to is this something that is <laughs> Is this something that is affordable? Affordable. Well, in the month of October, yes, because um, as we speak, there's a promo going on okay. at CIRAD Diagnostic Services which is located off National Library. Um, there's a 40% discount this month, uh, given the economic issues. I think it's <laughs> So really what would that good. come to? What would that come to? That's 7,500. Okay. Normally it's 12,500. Okay. So you get it at 7,500 this month of October, throughout up to the um, okay, last so this day is breast cancer awareness month. month. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. this is breast cancer awareness month. So viewers, take <laughs> take um, the opportunity. Yes. To 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 do a mammogram if you haven't done that. Done Husbands, me. please be willing to bring out the money for your wives <laughs> to go and do ah, the mammogram. Bring out your own money and do it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so in case you. women don't have the money, <laughs> please, <laughs> husbands, please be very supportive. Let them go and do the mammogram because it's something that they should do. Um, every year, something yeah. that they should do should be every year. year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, what of now? Let's talk about people who have the breast cancer. Mm. Uh, having treatment and all that. What kind of support can they get? Like, um, maybe let me explain better. Okay, people around, church members. You have a sister in your or women's fellowship. You have somebody who has breast cancer. What can you do? to support that person to be able to cope with the problem. Yeah, that's very good uh, points to mention, that people would want to give advice mm. on how to treat it. That is what we discourage. Please send, you know, encourage the person to go to the hospital. And that's why we're having this program, so that yeah. you, you are better informed at advising people. Yes. Let them go to the hospital. And then cancer treatment is very expensive. You know, a, a session of uh, chemotherapy could, every three, three weeks, could cost, let me just be modest, say 150000 Because apart from the drugs, you have to do all the tests to make sure that your body is prepared to take um, or rather is strong enough to take the chemo radiation. So we have to check the heart. We do echo. I don't know how much echo is now, but it should it's be about 10 to 12,000. About 10 to 12,000. You do ECG, you do um, liver function tests, you do full blood count plus platelets, uh, you, you do an ultrasound so that we, we know the state of the liver and other uh, organs. And then um, you would uh, also do chest, chest x-ray to yeah. see if it has spread to the chest or not. So all these are all preparatory tests, which are quite expensive. Scan. Some people even That's do CT scan. CT yes. Of chest and abdomen. The, if, in fact, it's, it's supposed to be done. Yes. You know, it's just mm -hmm. that we cut down for those who can't afford it, but it's supposed to be done. And then it's after that. Uh, you now start the treatment. the treatment proper. Sometimes you have to even transfuse blood. Yes, blood. You may have to transfuse before the patient is given because 
when you give the patient's hemoglobin level goes down. So you want to be sure that it is optim optimum. And, for, and before the next uh, chemotherapy, you have to do more series of tests. You know, because we want to be sure the patient is optimum before you give. You don't want to lose the patient in the process of giving your chemotherapy. So you have to work hand in hand. And uh, at those you know, times, they need financial support. Sometimes they need somebody to stay with them. They need somebody to encourage them. They need somebody to pray with them. That was those, that's the time that all these other things yes. come in. You know, give them the right food to eat. It's not that we don't we we say don't take this or don't take that, but um, any food that will not uh, help build their body, you don't want to give them. You want to give them. Uh, fruits, vegetables that they can eat and it will help, you know, uh, build their body. Because at that time, you don't even feel like eating anything yeah. heavy. People vomit after the uh, chemotherapy. Yeah, yeah. That is why we give what we call uh, free medications to even reduce that. So people have diarrhea, severe diarrhea for days. And uh, you wouldn't ex expect somebody who is going to toilet frequently to start eating amala or, you know, <laughs> swallowing eba or, you know, uh, semo. They would want to take something light. Right. So they need support. They need help. They need people talking to them, encouraging them. All the, those are supports that people can give. But for those who have it, who have the money, if they can help with supply, with, you know, supporting financially buying the drugs for these patients it will go a very very long way there are a few places few ngos that are doing that but in the queue is enough. very long yeah, the enough. queue yeah. is very very long but if people can support that that would be very helpful and we'll make sure that patient does not abuse it people can even pay for the drugs in the chemist and you can only collect the drugs from that pharmacy, you will not be allowed to collect money, except when you are going to have your session, you go to that pharmacy and we collect and collect the drug and come with it to the hospital to be administered to you. So there are many ways of going around it so that the money doesn't even get into the hand of the patient if people are afraid that their money will be misused. Comfort that the other way to go if you, know, you think we can support those who have breast cancer. Well, um, not much, but I wanted to talk about ways you can support women mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. by, part of it. yeah, because the mammogram is much cheaper than the treatment. Yeah. Yes. yes. Even at 12, five, it's, it's so, much so it's cheap it's compared, compared to, to yeah. 100 oh, to yes. 200,000 yes. for chemo. Yes. When you put and per session, investigation. Session. So we're looking at over a million just for the drugs for the chemo. In fact, there are and then some of the drugs that are up to a million per session. Per session, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, by encouraging a woman to go for mammogram, and or even paying for the mammo mammography examination for your wife mm -hmm. or your sister mm -hmm. or your grandmother or for a daughter or for whoever, is such a big encouragement. Yes. Honestly, it is because it's, it's not expensive at all. A lot of women are afraid. Mm. Like when I talk to some of my patients, they say, oh, they don't want to know what is there. They would rather just, you know, ignorance is bliss, that kind of thing. It's bliss for and then, a brief period of time. <laughs> and then some of them come and do the mammography and they will never collect the results. So you can also encourage someone by, okay, let's go together. Mm. Like two results. women can pair up and say, oh, a group of friends, mm -hmm. let's go and do um, mammogram if you're in the same age bracket for instance oh have you done your mammogram okay let's go together since you're so scared okay let me pay for you okay after the person has done it oh I am too scared I don't want to see the result you can go and pick it up for the person and you know and then even if there's a diagnosis of cancer maybe early stage or whatever stage you can encourage the person that hey it's better to fight this thing at the beginning than to wait you know Sometimes we see patients, they'll come, you see the, the mammography is even difficult when mm -hmm. the breast is already swollen, yeah. having ulcers and things like that. And you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. And you say, ah, I actually did one four, five years ago. 
and they told me there was something small they said i should go for biopsy and then i ran away mm. and then you're back five years after you know so we should encourage people oh a friend comes and says hmm, they said there's something small or it's suspicious they said i should go for biopsy don't allow that friend to just go to sleep mm. or just only go to prayer house mm. you know the person should go back and do what the doctors are saying get that biopsy done get that treatment started so i think that's a very important way support ourselves to yes do what we need to do and we need to also be asking ourselves about breast self-examination yes. women's fellowship groups and women groups mm. out there please talk to your members about breast self-examination about going for mammograms mm. It's not only to come and discuss uh, the dance you want to do in the village. <laughs> talk about the Asherbi. You know, Asherbi. <laughs> talk about things that will help everybody so that people are able to pick up these things early and treat early. And the bad news we hear about breast cancer will not continue. Yes. There's also Nancy wants one, to say one point more thing. we forgot. Clinical, yes, we should wrap up. So yes, finish. Clinical, clinical exam. breast examination. You can go to your doctor and your doctor can examine your breast. Yes. Anytime you happen to be in the hospital for other issues, just remember to ask for breast examination if you haven't done it in a long while. They will do it for you also for clinical breast examination. And then sometimes in our own clinic, when women come for antenatal care, we use that as an a window to examine their breast. And some of you feel, oh, they're just touching my breast. Mm. No, we're not touching your breast because we want to touch your breast too. <laughs> it's a, an opportunity, a window we have yes. to examine your breast for you. Because yeah. you there's actually breast cancer yeah. in pregnancy. Oh, yes. Yes. Exactly. yes, I've seen. In fact, there was a very pretty early 30s. Yes. She had breast cancer in pregnancy. It's common and and it tends yeah. to grow faster. Because yeah, of the hormones. hormones that are there. Yes. And yeah. so it's very good. It's very good to check. So they are on our case. They said we should close and go. Yeah. <laughs> so viewers, thank you so much for not touching that dial, for being with us to the end of this program. Please go out there, spread the news that breast cancer is preventable. Breast cancer is treatable. Breast cancer does not have to kill you. Professor Messi has told us that in developed countries, um, um, breast cancer prognosis is almost 100%. So people survive breast cancer. It's not a death sentence. So please start doing your breast self-examination every month. For those of us over 40, please let's go and do our mammograms. It's affordable and um, even now Comfort is providing promo because it's breast cancer month. Please go and do it. Pay for somebody encourage somebody, talk to somebody about breast cancer. Let that be part of our conversation and not just, um, as Comfort said, talking only about that should be. <laughs> Let's talk also about breast cancer. Thank you so much, viewers. Thank you, Professor Messi Siche. Thank you, Dr. Comfort Eguda for again taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about breast cancer. We want breast cancer to go down so that women survive and do well. Thank you so much, viewers. Looking forward to seeing you again right here at the living room on Equa TV International. Same time, same place. God bless you. <laughs>